Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-76. On our previous episode, we discovered that the mine was shut down and caved in to prevent humanoid infestation, and the group headed off to the town of Tunis. None of the adventurers had heard of it, but knowing that Geldor was carrying a sizable amount of wealth, including a portion due to the party, they opted to go with the miners as they continued their search for adventure. We rejoin them as they reach a walled canyon entrance. Wooden spikes guard an eight-foot wall with some stains on the tips, indicating a foiled attack by persons unknown. With Fargus and Lady Irena at the head of the column, Gildor's face broke into a broad grin, and he pulled back on the reins. Standing atop his seat, he raised both hands into the air and yelled back to the wagon train, exclaiming, We made it! The mage and ranger looked at each other, shrugging their shoulders. Tyra noticed their confusion and leaned over to the elven woman. On previous trips, we've been attacked and have lost members of our group. We consider ourselves quite fortunate that we had you to guard us. Lady Irena was shocked at the admission and leaned back in her saddle. Fargus saw the discussion but could not hear it as the mining group was cheering loudly. Gildor climbed down off the wagon and stretched out. Stomping up the incline to the front gates, he was flanked by Karina and Cabe Silvertongue, who had been motioned forward. The squat gnome pounded on the front gate made of hewn timbers with a thick black coating. Who goes there? was yelled from behind the barricade, and the gnome yelled out, Geldor, the miner, that's who, now let us in. The party members noticed movement at the top of the barricade and noticed a guard peering over the side. Geldor who? yelled out the sentry, causing the miner to shake his head in frustration. Looking up to the man, he ordered, Taggart, you open that damn door right now. A moment of clarity struck the guard and he recognized the rough miner. Yelling down to unseen persons, a loud cranking noise was heard and the double log doors began to squeal open. Geldor motioned to Tyra to come forward with the wagon and the train moved ahead slowly. Fargus and the others looked up the hill to where Karina and the Bard were standing, looking beyond the gates. Sister Elaine gave a shrill whistle to get their attention. The pair turned around and looked rather slack-jawed, but waved their associates forward. The Delvers waited until the last wagon was through the gap before galloping their mounts forward. Lady Irena had relayed the information given by Tyra, which caused the group to become concerned. But with nothing but trees and the plains on the horizon, they deemed no danger and proceeded up to Cabe and the Waif, turning their respective mounts to them. It was at this time that they discovered what had caused the pair to be so stunned. Tunis was a town larger than Colby. A small lake sat in the middle of the box canyon and was fed from a waterfall coming out of the mountain at the back. Tunis was a jewel in the wilderness that none of them had ever heard about. A garrison of 25 young guards protected the gate and closed it by moving oxen around a spit. Large wooden gears moved a thick timber which pushed the doors open and shut. The group turned back towards the lake and the town that surrounded it and were quite amazed by the sheer number of buildings. Notably, a large stone tower sat just off the lake. Roads encircled the town and used crushed stone to make them. The idyllic setting brought smiles to the PCs and they watched Geldor make his way back to the wagon train to thank the party. Thanking them warmly for the escort, he asked them if they wanted their cut from the tomb or they were going to put it in the coffer box. The PCs looked at each other with confusion, but Karina spoke up first. Tunis has a coffer box? Geldor smiled proudly and shook his head. They sure do, and it's a big help to miners like ourselves. The party fidgeted nervously, but Bulger couldn't take the suspense any further. What in blazes is a coffer box? he demanded. The group looked to the miner and Wave, who looked back at them with equally confused looks. 
Karina asked them if they had not heard of a coffer box and was stunned by their heads shaking negatively. Gildor laughed at the group's expense and pointed out that they should know, being famous adventurers. The group shifted at the slight until the miner apologized his gauche behavior. Karina stepped forward and explained that she had heard of them but had never actually seen them. She went on to tell the group what a coffer box was a magic item the size of a whiskey barrel, sometimes larger, sometimes smaller. You see, blurted Geldor, out here in the wilderness, it's hard to keep your wealth from getting stolen. The wizards in the bigger cities have used them for years to pass along information to each other. Explorers and miners got wind of the gimmicks and found it to be an easy way to store wealth. The group was clearly confused and not understanding the bigger picture. Karina took back the reins of the conversation and explained in simpler terms. Let's say you have something that you need protected but away from you. You take that item, you put it in one of the coffer whiskey barrels, along with your secret code. You close the lid and whoosh, off it goes to the wizard's bank, safe and sound. Still dumbfounded, the party clearly did not understand, causing Geldor to laugh again. Missy, this one doesn't have a lid, you gotta knock on it. He then told the group to follow him and he could show them. The group followed the squat miner through the town where he was recognized by several people who hailed him. Stomping through town, he came upon a small stone building with his wagon parked in front of it. Tyra stood by guarding the bags of treasure and had a piece of slate in her hand. The pair discussed how much it would be going into the coffer box and it was then when the old miner explained the division of treasure to the party. The group was rather surprised at the amount they were slated on receiving. Geldor saw the shock and asked them if the amount wasn't to their liking. Sister Elaine spoke up and asked if he really intended on giving them 1800 gold pieces worth of gemstones. He and Tyra grew nervous and asked them if the amount was disagreeable. The group then took their turn to erupt in laughter, making the pair of miners apprehensive. Worried that the adventurers could turn on him, Gildor pointed out that he could possibly increase the amount a bit. Lady Irena was the first to regain her composure and shook her head to the negative. Geldor, you misunderstand us. That amount is extremely generous. Geldor and Tyro breathed a sigh of relief as the revelation came, but quickly pointed out that they had certainly earned it. The adventurers gave each of the two a hearty handshake and thanked them profusely, further disarming the tense situation. Well, with that settled, shall we show you how the coffer box functions? We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.